Welcome to the Journey 2020, coming off the Super Bowl weekend. Did you enjoy the game? Overtime, people were asking me, like, uh, who was going to win. So I would say my answer was always the last team with the ball was my prediction. That's what I said. But anyway, this is the Journey 2020. I'm Charles Morris. This is the Journey 2020. Coming off the Super Bowl weekend, pretty good game, overtime. Could you ask me anything better? Um, I do have a prediction for next year. I got a feeling San Francisco might be in the Super Bowl again next year. I'm just saying. I don't know. But anyway, this is the Journey 2020. We've been around since 2013, and uh, Dr. Uh, um, Dr. Robinson, the um, person who came up with the idea and the concept and the name, well, he came up with the journey. I added the 2020 so we can find some website that was available. The journey is from me to you and from you to me so we can reach a high level, and that's what we try to do. Well, you know, we talk about some some um, fun things, some serious things, but normally I go into a little some something, but today I'm not going to. I'm just going to bring in and ask the question to the brother saying, are we staying awake? Are we awake? Are we, what? Are we, Rory T. Edwards, are we awake, man? Are we staying awake? I'm asking. You know, I, I just, I honestly would like to know. <laughs> I don't think so. I think we, we so sleep right now. We like a hibernating bed. All right. All right. All right. I'm bringing in Rory T. Edwards. He is not a stranger to the journey 2020. He's been on the Youth Central Sports. He's been on um, uh, the Journey 2020. We, we've always talked about this book, So You Want to Be an Athlete. Uh, you know, we talk about the power to the P. Got a couple of more books out there. He's an author. He's a coach. He's a, he's a, he a Ph.D. guy. I'm trying to figure out, like, can I hang out with you, brother? I'm, I, I, you know, I know if I hang out with you, I, I have to try to stay awake, man. You know, how you doing? <laughs> I'm wonderful. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me on today. Yeah. yeah. I hope everybody did enjoy the Super Bowl. And if your team didn't get any, I hope the team that you were cheering for won. How about that? Okay. Um, we're not going to talk about your favorite team. We're going to leave, you know, we're going to leave that alone. But uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm a lawyer. I bleed blue. I'll tell people off the top, I'm a New York Giants fan, and I don't care what you think about it. <laughs> yes, we, 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 we going to talk about that maybe a little bit later. But um, question for you. Yes. Um, people don't know that you're actually in Vegas. Um when they was building the stadium, you were sending back pictures and stuff like that. And um, what was the town been like the past week there in Vegas? What has it been like? It's been crazy. Um, well, I mean, Vegas crazy anyway, so how can it be crazier? <laughs> it was crazier. I mean, you know, you've got to realize all of these people coming in, uh, multiple events. Uh, I thought I was doing something big. I went to four events. I went to opening night. I went to... Uh, media party i went to the players party i went to uh media row i did eight interviews on media row just being who i am you know <laughs> okay uh, and uh and then went to the um bart star award breakfast on saturday morning and then i went to a, the, the continuation they had a vip reception after that so i went to that so I did a little bit more than four things, but, um, you know, I think no town is really equipped to handle a Super Bowl, especially if your if your stadium is right in the heart of the city. Right? Okay. So traffic was ridiculous getting out of events. Uh, it may have taken you 45 minutes to go one block. Oh, wow. Uh, and even some of the back roads, me being, you know, living here, I kind of knew some of the back roads and. Some people, I guess, discovered the back roads too, because even the back roads were clogged up. So, yeah. Um, how many seats sits in the stadium there? Gosh, I don't know how many in the in the stadium to be honest with you. But uh, they were all packed. They made they they made some decent money. Uh, I heard tickets were have been reduced in the nosebleed to six thousand a day of the game. 
so on the field, I heard it was upwards to 80, 100,000, depending on where you were sitting, you know. That's crazy. Yeah. That's, that's... And you couldn't get anywhere near the stadium anyway. So, you know, if people wanted to go and just hang out in the parking lots, right. they had that restricted. They had that restricted. You probably, you would have to, if anybody knows Vegas and the Mandalay Bay, uh, Mandalay Bay Drive, between Mandalay Bay Drive and Las Vegas Boulevard, they were checking your tickets right there. And then you had to walk up maybe 200 yards and then scan your ticket. And then once you scanned your ticket, then you got to walk maybe another 700 yards to the stadium. Wow. So people weren't getting, if you didn't have a ticket, you weren't even getting close to the stadium. So they, they, they didn't, well, I mean, even though this was still happening, because you know how we like to buy tickets at the cost. Somebody there scalping tickets, at, you know, hey, I got a ticket, I got a ticket, I got a ticket. So that was even yeah. further away from the stadium. So, I mean, I know that was happening still. Probably, yeah. They probably were. Because if I had had some tickets, I would have been out there selling them too. So, yeah. <laughs> Wow. And people said, if you got a ticket to the Super Bowl, you would sell it? Uh, yes, I would. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Without a doubt, you know. Yeah. But um, that and the the real reason why I asked you to come on the show today, you know, February, uh, we somebody decided to put that as Black History Month. Uh, don't quite know the history on that. Carter G. Woods, uh, 1926. So this month is 98 years old. No, 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 but I, no, no. I meant why February is what I was talking about. But, but, but oh, that's yeah. another story. <laughs> no, I was talking about why February, um, as Black History Month. Uh, but anyway, well, actually, again, give us that information for a lot of people that don't know since uh, what year? Oh, nineteen twenty-six, when Carter G. Woodson uh, and a pastor—I forgot the pastor's name though—they came up with Negro History Week. It was first initially started as a week oh. in February. Okay, they started and it was because of Lincoln's birthday um, and um, and uh, uh, Frederick Douglass's birthday in February. So it was sort of to honor those two individuals at the time. Okay. Well, that's why they took February. Okay, okay, okay. Well, then you answered well, you answer, you answer the question. See, that's why you tune in to the Journey 2020. You know, we learn history and we learn some other stuff as well. You know, but before we get into that, <laughs> before, because you're a history buff anyway, man. You know, I try to be sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> but um, quickly tell us, like, what you really do, and uh, because you do a lot of things, but uh, quickly yeah. share with us before we get into the heart of our conversation of Black History Month. I got a few questions that I want to ask you, you know, because we actually done this show before, but I got some more questions for you, brother. Right. I hope I have the right answers. Uh, oh, yeah, definitely. So what I do, I'm a, um, I say if people, I make it the easy way for people, easy term. I'm a, um, a life coach. I am also a performance coach and I am a transformational coach, all included. So I'm really a therapist uh, who works with individuals, organizations, Primarily, I do a lot with athletes on helping them to develop their blueprint for life, uh, helping people to understand how to develop their wellness plan, uh, how you and some people say they don't like the word balance, but how you, you balance your life and your work and all of your social interactions into uh, making them benefit you and uh, and not allow others to. Uh, dictate how your life is actually uh, your outcomes of your life are actually achieved so that's what I, I kind of do so that's in the layman's terms I don't want to go into all the psychological terms and all that people be thinking you want to know okay somebody shared something with me today and when I read it I immediately thought of, thought about you just mm -hmm. simply okay and I'm going to put it up and this is what they shared with me today Mm hmm Yeah. 
I have a picture that's like that too. That says the same sort of the same words. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Right. I wish I could find yeah. it, but right. You know, that's to me that's pretty powerful. Um, yeah. And I just think, uh, in the last one for sure, make your absence felt. You know. Uh, yeah. You know, which which means we're talking about your impact. Your right. impact. Right. 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 And that's what the 48 Law of Power tells you, too. Now. You know, don't always be in every place. Make people uh, appreciate when you show up. Mm -hmm. right. right. So we're, you sent something out that I know that, uh, actually, I think maybe you send it out every year. And we're talking about, um, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but uh, about do we appreciate do we celebrate? Do we recognize? What is it that you, um, in, on the YouTube, about mm -hmm. like about the question that you ask? Oh, I said, is black history important to the black community, to black families, to black people? Is it important to America? Right. And generally, when you ask that question, I know it's kind of broad, Excuse me. What, what's generally the answer in general that, that you may receive from? Well, for those who choose to engage, most people say absolutely. Uh, but, you know, I'm an actions person. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to be I don't want people to think that I judge people, but you are judged by your actions. Right. right? Of course. And so if you uh, are doing something and and you say this is important to you, you know, how do you rear your children? Your 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 accomplishments and actions are defined by the fruit of your labor. Right. right. And so that's how when people tell me something, I just look at their actions, because there's one thing, Charles, that I'm going to tell you that everybody wants to know. Everybody wants everybody to know when they're doing well. That's why these social media platforms were, were created. So people who had no influence or had no felt like they had no place in the world or could be could be important. They would show, you know, they would show the, the, the achievements that they're doing. Uh, it got to a degree of people that say, you know, I'm using the bathroom now. So now I know you're 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 current. That's good. You know, at least your system's working. But, you know, everybody wants to show the world how important they are. And social media gave people those platforms to do that. So uh, it, it, it's easy to go out and hear what somebody says and then go and find their platform and see what they're saying or showing about what their actions are. Right. So I don't have to judge you. You. Uh, you put your information out there to be judged by those you want that attention from. Hmm. Well, um, when I think, I mean, there is so much that, to me personally, that um, so many angles. And when I ask myself the question, I kind of answer like this. Because of our culture, and I, I hope I can go where I'm trying to go, what we're embedded with, what we're, what we're taught, a lot of it isn't our truth, it's our culture's truth. But our, whatever that is that, and I'll say it like this, that has been handed down to us, I guess you can say from slavery, not everybody, but the majority of us in our culture and what's been handed down to us, we have been molded and shaped to think a certain way. Like for an example, well, immediately when, because I don't look at uh, February as Black History Month, I look at every day in an opportunity is because we, every day that we live, we are black history, period. Um, yeah. I, back when I worked for the NBC affiliate many, many years ago, and I still have it somewhere. I haven't wore, wore it in years, but I had a shirt, and I, I never will forget when I wore it to work. And I remember one of my coworkers, he was this white guy, and you know how when you look at something, you kind of tilt your head a little bit, and you're trying to figure it out. 
And he looked at me and he was reading the shirt and, and I can see the puzzled look on his face. And it was it was really simple. The shirt said black history was history before there was history. And he's sitting there. Mm -hmm. No, it said black history. We was history before there was history. It's the same thing. Right. And he was sitting there looking at the shirt and he was trying to process it. <laughs> you know, it is, you know, for you and I, it's very simple. But I never will forget, he was just sitting there trying to, and he's looking at me like, like, what does that mean? And, and then he, he did ask me that, but he sat there and looked at it for a while. He said, well, what does that mean? And I just kind of looked at him and kind of smiled and like, I don't even want to try to even begin to even have this conversation with you. And I don't mean it the way that it sounds. But right. because, and, and I hope you can follow me on this, because the impact of our culture and we believe it Rory it's in our hearts and our souls of what's been molded and shaped in us from slavery and a lot of us can't get away from our spirit being taken away our who we are and recognizing the true fact, and I'll say this, and I say it like this, and people may not understand this, but there's something that says, well, you talk about the achievement of what you have accomplished, whether well, it's the history of many, because we know what we had to come up out of. Mm -hmm. But then the other side to me is because you believe what you were told in our culture, even to this day, you will say something in reference to your achievement because I'm a person of color. And I kind of say it like this right here. I said a lot of times you have to emphasize you're a person of color is because you believe what they told you. What does that mean? You didn't understand that the day that you was born, you were great. You were great when you was born. That's the part that you don't understand. So because they was trying to tell you something totally different and your perspective on it is different, your outlook is on it, and I understand why, but you haven't quite figured out the day that you was born, you was great. It's no different than this is me again, Rory. People go to Yale, people go to Harvard, people go to Princeton. Which is great that you go and you get your degree, whatever it is. But they act like these schools open your brain up, put something in, you walked out, they gave you a piece of paper. They gave you a piece of paper. You had that what's in you before you walked in the door. All they did yeah. was just help you in your discipline. They didn't put anything in your head in the sense to say that you this for that piece of paper. You, when you walked in there, you were that. But that's not how they see it. Yeah, that's how you got in there. <laughs> but they make it seem like because you went there and then you walked out, you somebody different than when you were before you got there. Right. Yeah. You know, but that's our culture. But that's me. <laughs> yeah. So, but you know, like I said, people, you're already there. When you get a, when you get accepted to go to those schools based on the standards of American education, you already have that, and uh, it's just how you overcome the fact you're going to be told that you were here by affirmative action. Uh, but you know, you sat down in class and. And did your SATs and ACTs just well, just like they did. Anybody who's there, and so you're there because you were chosen based on your academic uh, excellence, right? You weren't chosen, handpicked. They right. didn't walk down the street and, like we used to do. You know, uh, seven teams, and we're gonna count numbers one through seven, and that's the team you want. No, they were chosen there because of their academic excellence, right? And like you said, their discipline, right? Right. Because everybody's smart. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just how you apply yourself. Right. right. It's just how you apply yourself to. Right. 
Right. It's it's yeah. a, a lot of us just don't have the discipline. The discipline, yeah. like like there's like this. You know, I've been saying this here for a long time. And this is this, and and you probably can speak into this because that's some something that I know that, that you can do. So a lot of us, and 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 I'll talk about the brothers, like where I'm from. We are good at the hustle, but we're not good at the business. Right, we, right. We can we can now the hustle is the business, but we are more legit wanting to make it the hustle than trying to make it the business. I mean. Legit is what I'm trying to say. We can yeah, do the hustle yeah. thing all day long and be successful in the hustle. Now, it's running as a business, but it's a hustle. But you right. won't take the time to make it legit to be the business that it should. Right. That's mind boggling. Yeah. Well, it is because you've been taught and told that the hustle is more urbanized right you you more you 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 from the neighborhood you hustling you right right instead of going open up and opening up a brick and mortar and putting a sign on the door that says we're closed now we're open and hours are from you know like big red said in the movie my office hours are from nine to five right mm -hmm. now going to get a business license registering your business with the with the state so that you're legal uh putting in <laughs> The, the things to not just take cash and, right. you know, be able to take credit cards and then having a bookkeeper who can, you know, legitimize your money. Because as soon as you start getting too big, they're going to come in and shut you down anyway. So you might as well get legitimate. You right. might as well become legitimate, a legitimate business so that you're able to, when you get to where we are in life, um, you may be able to secure some funds for your contributions in your earlier part of life, right? Right. And people, people in their sixties talking about, I ain't getting no social security yet yeah, because you never worked. <laughs> you never well, worked well, at an organization. That well, well, that was because because they didn't understand how it works. They didn't understand right. that w when you're doing this over here, this is for this over here. It, 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 right. They 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 didn't process it because they too busy hustling. <laughs> right. Right. That's the crazy thing, though. So that's what we got to start educating our children on is that you, you know, you're not going to be this young and agile and and have the opportunities right now that you're doing what you're doing, because later on in life, when your body starts to shut down, uh, you need to receive some type of income to continue to survive. And you're not going to be able to hustle like you're hustling now. So uh, you need to start pain into a system that may may be here may not be here when they get to that old to that age to pay them back for their contributions so as we speak in to this rory and i i know that you're going to speak more into it but as we talk about black history month and like i said because of see, i got this thing man when it comes to black history well uh, black history month because to me it's like black history of every day of your life um yeah you know there's a uh back when i used to work at this this um the station this tv station called orange tv i saw something that aired on the pbs station right it was in and, and a friend of mine actually helped produce it and i didn't know it at the time i just happened to see it now mind you i want you to think about this it was very well done, and it was pr produced and played on the PBS station. Now, I worked at the government station here, the local government station, and they kind of go hand in hand, the PBS and the government station, right? This was like, in, this was in the 90s, by the way. This, it's, it's, and actually, it's the person that produced it has it on their YouTube and I put it on my YouTube, too. So for people, it's called, Did You Know? Well, You Should. And what it is, is, is it's a little skit where she is um, coming home and she has these little kids in the living room. And so and when she comes home, they're in the living room being kids after school, just sitting there playing. And so she said, gather around. And she said, you know what? I want to share something with you. I can't. How many... The kid picks something up, 
And then she said, do you know who invented that? And uh, the kids said, no. So this, she said, a person of color, you know, invented that. And then she said, go over there right there, you know, pick, pick, pick that up. And he said, do you know who invented that? And, and it actually was the broom. It was a person of color. And then it started out like, look around the room and tell me these things in this room that people of color have invented. So it's a whole hour of talking about, did you know where well, you should? All these things that people of color have invented. It's a very good, you know, it's, you know. And so they showed it at one time, Rory. So, so you know, I was excited about it because I thought it was, you know, it was, it was, it was cute. It was very well done. So I go to the PBS station. I talked and I saw the lady. I said, uh, last night, uh, two days ago, you guys aired. Did you know? Well, you should. She go, oh, here, you can have it. They gave me the master copy. So you know they weren't gonna air it no more. They gave me the master copy. <laughs> right. right. Crazy. I'm serious. She she just go here. You can have it. <laughs> I wouldn't even ask for the master copy. I just wanted a copy. She go here. You can have it. <laughs> wow. And so I made sure that we aired it every year during Black History Month. And I don't know if they're still doing it because I stopped working for them. But I did make a copy and put it on my YouTube channel. And it's called Did You Know Where well, You Should? But if you, I get these things of all these things that people don't know that people of color and you know uh responsible but like last night and you already know this i don't have to tell you i was looking at all the things that that people of color invented but the white people got the credit for it because they wouldn't allow them to patent them there's a yeah i mean there's a whole list of inventions that other people got credit for because the people of color who were slaves, uh, they invented them or they wouldn't allow them to patent them. So when uh, someone else came along and patent them under their name, uh, they didn't have the, the money or the resources for the inventions to be patented. Like something as simple as um, the, the rotor on a, on a boat. Right. Okay, for something as simple as that. Um, I, there's a lady who, um, and it's funny because when I saw it, I had no idea that she invented this. But the ringer, you know, your hand, like, you know, you wash your clothes and you put it through yeah. the ringer and you hand crank it. That was, yeah. in, that was invented by this sister, 18-something. Uh, and she was trying to get it patent, Rory. And they wouldn't let her. And do you know how much she had to sell that for? That of course it, you know, it made a lot of money. She had to sell that eighteen dollars. Wow. Eighteen dollars. And of course, you know, they made millions off of it. But right, she right. all all she got out of that in her invention. But I mean, we already know the the list goes on and on and on and on of of um. All the things that had happened, all the you know disparities and so on and so forth. But is there anything that you know? I shouldn't say surprise you, but is there any a couple of inventions that you just took a step back and go, you know what? I didn't know that. No, when we did, I had my academy before for my young men. Uh, mm -hmm they were part of the requirement was to go out and find 10 inventions that were created by uh, people of African descent. Okay. And uh, that's what their job was to do was go out and find those inventions and bring them back and present to the group. So, you know, we at least got about 150 uh, inventions mm -hmm. sort of uh, delivered to us in one of our sessions and we used to do that every year just to see how many were duplicated or even uh some students got got even more innovative and went and got the ones that like you said that were stolen uh that they 
were patented by, you know, their slave master's name or something of that nature, but they were mentioned. So, you know, there were quite a few inventions that, you know, most people don't know uh, to, to this day that were not something right. that was created by. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here looking at a list like chess, uh, certain type of medicines, aeroplane propelling, biscuit cutter, folding beds. Oh, yeah, actually, I did, I did see that last night. Folding beds and how they took that from that brother. The rotary engine, the car coupler, the, the letterbox, stainless steel pads, uh, home, home security system, a corn planter, cotton planter. Ironing board, street sweeper, uh, the horseshoe, the lawnmower, the typewriter, uh, the train alarm, uh, the peanut butter, all right, George Washington Carver, lotion and soap, George Washington Carver, uh, ice cream mold, printing press, uh, mm-hmm. uh, window cleaner, pencil sharpener, fire extinguisher. Uh, shoe lasting machine, whatever that is. The tra- well, the traffic signal. Everybody knows that one. Electric railway system, R- the roller coaster, the helicopter, blood pa- plasma, ice cream, uh, sugar refinement, clothes dryer, the cellular phone. Oh my goodness, boy! I, boy, a lot of people should be happy about that. <laughs> right. I mean, like, a whole. Um, the door stop, the door knob, um, postal letter box, uh, the guitar, the golf tee. All right, uh, Tiger. Uh, the kitchen table, the eye protect, eye protector, the egg beater, the starter for for uh, generator, refrigeration controls, a clothes dresser. Wow. The bottle cap, electric lamp, and the list goes, uh, the refrigerator, uh, the mop, uh, and the list goes on and on and on and on. And I say these things, and the reason why I'm, I'm rolling all of these things off, um, Rory, and it's just a whole list, a whole list, a whole list, is that you probably, well, I know you can speak into this. Our culture have taught us there's something wrong with the color of our skin. Well, we hate ourselves among them, you know, as we depict each other. And we hate our nose. We hate our lips. We hate our hair. Uh, we always try to look like some other culture because we don't want to be who we are and see the beauty in which we were cre- created. So we're constantly at battle with ourselves. And I think that we do more harm to each other. And I'll say this, I think that if we was left on this planet, I'm talking about people of color, by ourselves, I think 200 years from now it'll still be the same. Because what was embedded in, we believe it more than other people. And I'll let you speak to that. Hmm. I, um, let me see. I would say maybe if we allowed uh, the, the voice of those who would continue to create that culture be the um, dominant voice. Uh, what has happened, and I think in our culture, is that we've allowed or we've allowed them, the dominant culture, I won't say dominant because that word seems like, you know, we're, we're submissive or passive. So I want to say the uh, the most uh, controlling culture to place certain individuals uh, as our spokespeople, and those people are are strategically selected, and so when they speak for us, they uh, sort of depict the belief that we all think like this, right? Uh, Great example is that is a, there's a situation that happens in the community. They find the most ignorant uh, <laughs> individual to interview, right? Who can't even conjugate a verb. Or I'm not saying that you need to be able to conjugate a verb and not be not being and be intelligent, 
but I'm saying they find a person who definitely uh, doesn't have the cognitive development to really explain what went on, uh, what he or she saw, uh, you know, and they're, and they're just disheveled. And you find that type of person instead of looking around to, to get another person so that now is a different representation of that particular community. What they believe is this is a representation of that community, but, but it may not be. He may be the one and only person in the community who is that person. But, but, but see, that's the problem that I have right there. Now, I don't now I, I hear what you're saying, but I'm going to look at it a different way, Rory. Everything you say, it is true. But unfortunately, our culture, I'm not saying our culture, I'm talking about us as a whole, would take that, and I'm not talking about people of color, I'm talking about people that are, you know, not of color, would look at that person and say, that's me. So, yeah. now, now your ignorance comes into play. Because you're seeing one person, now you're judging a whole race of people on that, on that, saying that that's me. And that's the thing that a lot of people of color understand. We do understand that when we speak, for a lot of times, you're speaking for all of us. We do, un even though that's not true, we do understand the perception of it. Some of us do. Be like, oh, Lord, why did you get that person there? Oh, Lord. Because we know the repercussions of what, that, what we just saw. Like, oh, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, wow. But then that is why you say what you said because you'd be like, he he can't put two. He uh, if you ask him what's two and two, he gonna uh, he uh, you know. But that's yeah. just the reality. But that's the thing in which I say, Rory. And this is me. I just think this is me personally. I just think a lot of times we believe it more so than others do, in the sense of what's been handed down to us. We believe the, the the height. We believe uh, that whole theory of well, you know, he can't play quarterback because he's not smart enough. You know, he can't run the the, the he can't hold business because he's not smart enough. I'm saying that hand that thing that's been handed down uh, from slavery and the the way the world always looked at us and we accepted it, and we embraced it among our own culture. The saying that, um, like, like there's a friend of mine who we both do the same thing, and I I don't want to get into it, Rory, but a, a a lot of times over the years we both have been part of things that we kind of gave money away, and the reason why we gave money away is because there was people of color doing things, and we wanted to see it happen. So instead of coming to the table charging $1,200, we may have charged $250, okay? So um, because it looks to be something good for us people of color. And even though these people putting it on, they, they do it, they've been doing it, and we try to continue it, try to make it keep going. We do our part. We do our part. And we always end up on the short end of the stick and we never get paid truly what we're worth. But the bigger picture is that we're trying to help these people of color pull this thing off and make it successful. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is what we do because we understand how it works. The problem that we were just having this conversation the other day is this right here. Everybody, the majority of us look for the hookup. The conversation is we're always looking for the hookup. The problem that we have is your hookup that you look for with me is not the same hookup that you look for when you're dealing with, with, the, with the person that's non-color. Your hookup with them is totally different than the hookup that you're trying to get. A, you know, you will pay more for them or you will be willing to pay more to, to them than when you come to me. And that's where we're frustrated. We get that you want the hookup. 
But why are you willing to pay them more than you're willing to pay me? And we're doing the same service. That's what's right. frustrating. That's the well, frustrating I, part. My, my thing was more or less about your question, what you asked, which was in relations to us being on the earth by ourselves. So we wouldn't have to deal with people of other races or cultures. We would have to learn how to live with one another if we were going to survive, right? Mm -hmm. So I think the media also portrays and, and also helps in the in, in inclusiveness of us believing that message, right? Now, if we were by ourselves, we would have control of the media. Uh, we would have people like yourself and your friend who would be running the CBSs and the NBCs and all of that versus uh, someone else of, of non-color running these organizations who are putting out the narrative. Uh, more people, I think there's more people who really want to do well than there are who don't want to do well. The ones who don't want to do well are are ones who believe that the hustle is an easier opportunity and I want to get over easy, right? But if if you if you did things with a consequence right right away, if I think it would be a little bit more more harsh, right? We know that the the, the thing that I talked about last week was the um um what is it called? Oh, the war on drugs, right? Okay. We know when that policy came in, came in place that uh, uh, there were there were just as many white users as there were black users. There were just as many just as many white dealers as there were black dealers. Uh, for black people to to uh, take cocaine and, and turn it into crack, and if you if you're caught selling cocaine, you got like one to five years or something like that. If you got caught selling crack, you got 20 years. It's the same product, right? It's just the mere fact that the people who are responsible, who sit at these tables to make these laws, if they are of color, are not, they've been bought, right? They've been bought out. But if everybody at the table is black, I think eventually we would lose the stigmas of what how we perceive each other. We perceive that each other because we're told that's who we are. And I think we're 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 more um we're we have more of a consumer mind than we have a producer mind, right? And that particular mindset would have to change if you didn't have to rely on say for instance we they, they left, right? We would People would have to work now. They wouldn't be welfare. Welfare is part of a system that was set up by the government. And the fact that they tell and make black people believe that there's more black people on welfare than there are whites is totally a false right. narrative. Right. That is true. And so when we tell people this stuff, they we run with it. Right. We run with it. What's the first thing black people want to do? I had a friend of mine who told me during COVID at one time he put out this message, man, you got to be careful. Uh, the whole state of Massachusetts, 98 percent of people in Massachusetts have tested positive for COVID. Massachusetts is one of the states that was pushing back against COVID. So they weren't going to get 98 percent of people, first and foremost, to test positive because so many people were pushing back on it. The other thing is that if 98 percent of people in Massachusetts, which is a large state, a large state, were tested positive with COVID, the whole world would have shut down again. The whole world would have shut down. It wouldn't have just allowed, you can't drive into Massachusetts. You know, what are you going to do? How are you going to, what are you going to do? So we're quick to be, I think we're quick to want to be first with information, no matter if it's false news or if it's real news. We don't want to do the research or the work to find out the fact that um, this could be just a, a plot or a ploy for you to be the person to spread it to your constituents, right? Now, what I try to do is if I hear something, I'm going to go and find as many ways or many resources I can that validate it before I get on the phone and call you and say, Charles, guess what? Um, uh, you know, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to switch that real quick and t tell you something I told you. You remember I was supposed to be moving to Florida, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm not moving to Florida now because of the sinkholes in Florida. Right. <laughs> so, right. I saw a documentary. I saw a documentary that said, man, the sinkholes is in Florida. And then I ended up talking to you. I talked to Regina. I talked to other people who live 
in Florida. I talked to Coach. And everybody said, man, that happens like once every 80 years, right? <laughs> so, and in certain different places. But the first thing I was saying, no, nah, I ain't moving to Florida because of the sinkholes, right? right? But but that's information that we do. We get information like that, and we run as fast as we can uh, and holler the British are coming, right? There's many people <laughs> who want to listen to that news. But I think if we were here by ourselves, I think it would cause us to – sort of behave in a different way because now you couldn't you didn't you wouldn't have anybody to blame for your shortcomings it wouldn't be the color thing anymore oh white people don't like me or um asian people sell all the hair well you buy all the hair why wouldn't they sell it <laughs> you buy all the hair somebody got to sell it you don't want to sell it but you want to buy it right. you see you're not a producer you're a consumer you have a consumer mindset so we couldn't say that um music is controlled by uh, the Jewish population, we would be in control of the music. So any narrative of music that went out, we would be in control of, right? We would have to, people would have to be owners. Sports teams wouldn't be the teams that they are. Uh, you can't say, oh, we don't have any black owners of, of professional sports. Well, we'd be the only person on earth. If we wanted to watch sports, we would have to be owners and we would have to change our, our mindset. But there would be people like you and I who would now have an opportunity to be that because we would now have to, what they say, the cream rises to the top, right? So the cream would have to rise and not be, and not be uh, sort of uh, uh, pushed away by the system, right? By the system, the systems that were set up. Uh, you know, I talked about some of that stuff last, last week also in my YouTube event. I talked about black codes and Jim Crow laws. Mm -hmm. Those are the those are the ways and systems that were put in place to prevent us from thinking we're great because what they did, they allowed us they, they allowed us not to have access to the resources that would make us equal in the opportunities to make us great. So what do people do? People some people became tired. Some people said, I'm not going to break that wall. I'm not going to be able to break that wall. Well, if you're not able to break through the wall. Get some shoulders to stand on, which you are standing on, and have somebody climb over the wall. And then when that person climbs over the wall, they reach back and pull other people up, right? Right. Just like that picture you showed. Those mm -hmm. ants, those ants, mm -hmm. they have a mission. And their mission is when they get up in the morning, they accomplish that mission. They don't stop all day. And they keep going. Look, at those ants don't stop. And we know we see ants. Ants are very disciplined in what their mission is. If we just had the discipline of the ants, then we would be the great people that we're supposed to be. But we've allowed so many excuses, I believe. That's my thoughts. We've allowed so many excuses to determine our outcomes, to determine our outcomes. And, and I'm just one, you know, like I told you, I was at the Super Bowl media row and I was invited by one person to do one interview and ended up doing eight interviews. Why? Because my persistence back in the day I used to be a DJ on WBLS, Mr. Magic. And Mr. Magic used to say persistence overcomes resistance. And so I was persistent and I was persistent in making sure I got those interviews. And the people would say, well, what do you talk about? This is what I talk about. Are you interested? I am. I'd like to know more. Crack open that mic. Let's go. And I ended up doing eight interviews. <laughs> yes, that's that's because you woke, man. <laughs> I'm woke. I'm woke. That's right. I'm trying to, I'm trying to reverse that stop woke act. <laughs> you know that, that your governor is, is, has instilled in the state of Florida, but uh, you know, for it to be stop woke act, and for people not to not to to process that and say stop being woke. Right. Why would I stop being woke? But right? why would I see him? You know, this is one of the things that um, we're talking about, that I was talking about, and our inability to understand what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say. A seat at the table. Mm -hmm. We don't quite grasp that you need to have a seat at the table, especially if you want change. Um how else are you going to get change if you're not at the table? Right. 
the people at the table are the ones that are making decisions on, on your lives. Those are the game changers. But you have no interest at, at, at being at the table. Uh, when it comes to and then when you do get at the table right mm -hmm. you can't act like you got to act like you belong at the table right, right. Mm -hmm. and then you can't you other thing you can't allow people to say that you're an angry black man or angry black woman right i'm passionate about making sure that my people have access to the resources that your people do that's not angry if you consider it anger then that means you're trying to hide it from me because I know now what you're what you're offering, and if you're not distributing it equally, I should be angry, right? Should oh, I yeah. be angry? Yeah. You would be angry. So now, if the, let's just say, like you asked before, just all of us. What if the roles were reversed? What if the roles were reversed, and, and right now, tomorrow, the roles reverse, and we were ninety-five percent of the governors. We now became. All of the positions, Congress was 95% black and the Senate was 95% black, conscious, woke black people. Not the, not the ones that begin interviewing on TV. Not the, <laughs> not, you know, but I'm talking about there's a lot of conscious and woke brothers and sisters out here who could be at those tables, who would have to make those decisions and not self-appointed uh, individuals who believe that they got a phone call from somebody in their sleep that anointed them to be the leader of the, 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 the community group. And now they're the spokesperson for these people and they haven't, they haven't put in the work to be the spokesperson. And so you have to understand that having a seat at the table means that you are supposed to, if it's a five course meal being served, that you need to be served all five course meals and not serve the five course meals. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the thing. You know, when they say when you say pass this, you mean uh, that you're at the table because you're credible and you're a formidable opponent and you're at the table for the purpose of your intellect and your ability to change the projection of what is the, what is being discussed at the table. Not this hand selected to, to, for the cameras to say I have a face that looks like y'all. Right. Right. You know, you know, you know, um, per perception is, is interesting. Uh, yeah. When, when you was talking about Massachusetts, you know, I went to school in Boston for a while. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the perception, you were talking about the sinkholes. And uh, it's real funny about how people see, see things. So I'm in Boston talking to some of my team, teammates up there. Do you know that they actually believe this, Rory? That I walk out my door and I just run into a gator like every day. <laughs> wow. And they looking at me, they be like, y'all not walk around and like gators? I said, I said, do you know how often I see a gator? <laughs> Right. It, it, but it's the perception of them asking me these questions that I'm looking at them like, what? And yeah, you know, you in Florida and uh, uh, the gator this, the gator that. And I'm looking at them like, what are you talking about? I yeah. say the majority of the time when I see a gator is when I'm at the zoo, <laughs> you know, and they're looking at me like, y'all don't be walking around and there's gators like out there in the front yard and in the backyard. I said, now there are some places, depending on if you live near a lake, here and there, that you will run into a gator if you, you know, da 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 da, -da. But that was eye-opening to me, <laughs> you know, because I'm, uh, you know, I'm up north and da 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 da, -da. And they said that they're asking me seriously about how every day of my life I'm running into a gator. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, but that's just people's limited knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I think when I was a history teacher and instead of trying to teach what's in the history book, you uh, give people, I gave my students an opportunity to explore uh, when we talked about states. I want you to go in and research states. 
to find out what is really going on in the state. Not with the book, this book where, where we've purchased tells you what's happening in the states. Uh, you know, I think I said on that YouTube thing that I did about people not being aware and people, all people believe that um, slavery started in America on the shores of Jamestown, Virginia in 1619, when in reality in 1553 was when the first African uh, enslaved individuals were brought here and they were brought to Florida, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a city, they built the city of St. Augustine's, but they also had one of the biggest cities in Florida uh, I forgot the name of it, but it's right near St. Augustine's where it was a it was a black settlement. And so 70 years before before we believe enslaved Africans arrived on the shores of America, they had already arrived on the shores of America with the Spanish. Uh, and many of them escaped when they got here and uh, habit and, and cohabitated with the Native Americans who were already here, who people are saying, you know, where they weren't here. We were here first. No, you you landed on these these uh, land which was already populated by people of color. Which and is, so which I'm still trying to understand how how you discover something when somebody's already here, but that's correct. Right. And the reason why is the same thing when they talk about other things is that if these Native Americans who they now depict as very, uh, uh, their skin color is very close to white. If they were white, then those black slaves or, or enslaved people who escaped would have never been able to not be caught when you saw them with the Native Americans, right? They have to have the same pigmentation for them to blend in, for you not to know that they were the slaves that we just brought over here or the Africans, but that they were part of the same culture as the Native Americans for which they escaped and cohabitated with. Uh, and so that's where I'm telling people, you just have to listen to the words and then really evaluate them. Don't just listen to the words and take them for truth. Because why would somebody who despises you tell anybody anything good about you? Right? Yeah. You have nothing good to say about me. That's why I remember old people said, if you don't have anything good to say, close your mouth. Because why would you go out there and not like somebody and then go out and praise them, right? right? You're not. But when you are sitting up here talking about, and that's what I'm saying about this uh, Stop Woke Act. If you thought that people of color had no value to this world, then leave their little contributions in the book so people can really see that when they step up here and say, I want to be respected for what I've done for this country, then the books will show that they didn't make any contributions. But just like the list you wrote, wrote I mean, read a little while ago, mm -hmm. all of the things that you can find when you find out the contributions that people of African descent have made to the development, not of just this country, the but world. of this globe, mm -hmm. then uh, that's the only reason you're trying to hide that from the children. It's because you don't want children to be woke. You want them to. We want to stop the woke act. It's very simple what they're saying. If anybody is stopping you from being awoke, that means you're asleep. And when you're asleep, I can do anything I want to do while you're asleep. And then when you wake up, there's new policies and procedures and practices in place. All right. And uh, now you have to agree with them. And if you don't agree with them, then we have a consequence, which is most case incarceration. All right. We take your rights away. And then once you get incarcerated, when you get out, you have no more rights. Your voting rights are, are taken away. Your right to obtain uh, rightful and gainful and gainful employment is, is limited. Uh, you, you can't climb that ladder of success because that record follows you and that record dictates who you can become in this particular country. And for people to sit around and say, I don't believe that, you don't believe it because you haven't been affected by it. Because if you're in the in the class which is making these laws and these procedures, then you wouldn't be affected by it, right? But if you if you're in a, if you're in a race or a class for which I am trying to eliminate, you're going to be affected by it, right? You get right. pulled over for driving uh, a DWI, 
Uh, they take away your license. They put you in jail. That's what I was saying here. If anybody got caught with a DWI while driving here during the Super Bowl week, they won't see a judge probably until next Thursday, right? Next Friday or something, probably next Monday. Uh, and then what happens? They lose their job. They lose their license. They lose the opportunity to now become a valuable citizen. And uh, that's what we need to be a little bit more aware of when we're talking about uh, black history. If we're talking about black history, we need to talk about how the history, how we've been affected by the history uh, that has been written for us and start to begin to narrate our own history and tell our individual children the truth. But now we got to deal with another group of individuals, all of the biracial children who are of African descent and some other race. Uh, what are they, well, how do they identify them in this country? They identify them by their African heritage. So, uh, you know, no matter what you are, you still, if you got that one ounce of, of African blood in you, in this country, you are considered of African descent. Mm -hmm. So, uh, right on. Your mama, right yeah. on. <laughs> 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 you have to understand that you know that's the crazy thing all right well all right we're talking to the, the one and only dr rory t edwards and <laughs> um tell us um b before we get out of here i know that uh there's a couple of books new books i think there's two there's two new books right isn't there two uh, maybe, maybe three it depends on which titles you have. I'm trying to see. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, you've talked about them, but I'm saying other than the ones that I talked about here. I mean, we talked about this one right here, uh, but I think there's like two or three others uh, other than yeah. um, these two. I think there's like three others, right? Yeah, I have the 13 Commandments of Rory mm -hmm. T. Edwards. Mm -hmm. I have uh, Numbers Don't Lie, People Do. Mm-hmm. I also have a guy that is, uh, so you want to be a, a, a division one athlete, which right. actually takes you through, um, through, um, uh, what it looks like from seventh grade all the way to 12th grade. And that was co-written with my man here named Ennis Wesley, who owns, uh, uh, six court, 40,000 square foot uh, facility here. He and I co-wrote that because he's been in sports for quite a long time. Uh, and then I also have one uh, that I just need to send to the printer again. It's it's um, how to enjoy your life in your golden years. So it really talks about how to how to live happy after 50. Uh, yeah, you know. that that would be a good conversation for to have Rory because I don't know to what degree uh, you would be able to speak on that, but um, a little off the cuff, I just find that I have a um, uh, my my brother who recently retired but went back to work, a friend of mine who retired, but he talks about some of his coworkers that are 75 and 80 years old and still working. Um, yeah. Because they don't know what else to do, which I find absolutely crazy. Now, mind you, they're working for like 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 UPS, so they 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 made money. Yeah. They, they just don't know how to retire. They don't they don't know what else to do. They all they know is to come wow. home, no, no, come home, wake up, and go to work. You in wow. your seventies and eighties, yeah. and you still waking up, going to work, and you've been at this plant for over forty five, fifty years. And it's not that right. you don't have money, that you don't know anything else or know how else to live. Other yeah, than to and you didn't go to work. And you didn't enjoy your life when you were supposed to enjoy your life. You know, every two or three months, I'm somewhere. You know, I'm sending pictures, posting pictures from some somebody's <laughs> island, somebody's <laughs> plane, somebody's airport. Uh, Why I can still uh, stand thoroughly upright. Yeah, because I'm gonna be, yeah. I'm gonna be in somebody's. Uh, somebody else's community and uh, and and that's what i say also helps with uh you know i say our as people we're created by our energy our vibration and our rhythm and you know i'm going places where 
the rhythm is constantly is helping me constantly build my rhythm so that I am increasing my energy. And you go to places where there's sunshine and that sunshine also uh, helps increase your ability to, uh, to, to live better. Your life, your organs need, your organs really need uh, the sunshine, what the sun gives you to help some of your ailments that may be in your body or may be trying to sneak up on you because you're dormant. So that's why I tell people, listen, travel as much as you possibly can. Get out there and see what the creator has uh, has painted on this on this on this global uh, canvas. And you'll be amazed at how many people you see who look like you, how many people really respect you. When I did the interview the other day, I did it with the Penn State College radio station. And one of the interview questions was that they saw in my um, in, in my bio on my website that I had gone to Africa for 10 weeks and to some other countries in the Maya to work on uh, some developments there. And they said, what was it like going to Africa? And they asked me, should people of color go? I said, everybody needs to go. I said, because what we've allowed Africa to be depicted by is Tarzan movies, King Kong and Godzilla. And, uh, you know, I've been there and never seen King Kong or Godzilla and definitely uh, never saw Tarzan. Uh, so I think that I said, if you go there and look at all the resources that are available in Africa, the way people treat you, I said, the people told me, they said they revered me more than they revered their own Africans because I am, uh, ancestors. My ancestors were the strongest of the strong because they made that journey and were able to survive. And I am the offspring of that, of that, of those ancestors. And so People think I'm going to Africa. People, I hear people say, I want to go to Europe more. I want to go to, I want to go to Greece. I want to go to Rome. I want to go to places that um, try to enslave you themselves. But there's nothing wrong with going there. I've been to Europe. I, you know, had a good time in Europe. But um, I rather go to countries that were that are populated with sunshine and people of of, of color, right? Mm-hmm. So I can get a general idea of how they perceive us. And, and, and what they how their perception of the world is and how the people who are in governing in their in their countries are treating them also. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's some of the things that I think people need to do in your golden years. <laughs> All right. Well, we're coming to the end of the journey 2020 with Rory T. Edwards. But before we get out of here, I'm going to share one quick story. I'm going to try to make it real quick. Um, I had a, a experience when I was working at the TV station. <laughs> Uh, going out, uh, helping p- produce and uh, videotaping a news story. So you know how they like to sometimes end. Well, a lot of times they like to end the the the, the, the news on a lighthearted story. And so they was out there, and the, this gentleman who at Tiger Eye, you know, Productions um, had rescued a little cub, uh, a lion, a tiger, a tiger, I think it was. So we was out there doing a little heart story on the little cup, you know, little lion that was about this big. And the owner said, you know, I want to show you something. Because he, well, making it longer than what it should be. This is what he said. This this one thing. He, he said, you see the panther? Yeah, okay. You see the tiger? Yeah. You see the lion? Like, yeah, okay. So he said, now out of all these three, which one you think you should fear the most? You know, everybody said the lion, right? Yeah. He said the panther. He said a mm-hmm. panther out of the three are the sneakiest. That's the one mm-hmm. that'll be on you before you even know it because it's real sneaky. But that wasn't the story. Mm-hmm. He's, but that wasn't the story, Rory. The story was, he said, here, I want to show you something. He took a piece of meat. He threw it in the lion's cage, threw it to the lion. The lion started eating it. Right. So every time the lions tried to eat it, he started squirting him with the hose to agitate him. Right. So he knew what he was doing. So he was like, eh. long, long story short. Rory, that lion stood up and that lion roared. Mm-hmm. OK. When that lion stood up and that lion roared, I lost all respect for Taz. 
Tar- Tarzan. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Tarzan ain't fooling with that. <laughs> I'm letting you know your natural instinct kicked in to let you know that right there ain't nothing to play with. <laughs> right. right. His, his roar his roar just went right through you. And you looked at this thing and he and he looked and he roared. He stood up and he roared and he was like, You need to leave me alone right now while I eat this piece of meat before I and I'm like, I get it. Yeah. I get yeah. it. And I was like, I have no more respect for Tarzan. Zero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm dead serious. You had to be there to experience that moment because you can't right. put it into words. But anyway, I just thought I'd just share that little story. With you. But anyway, mm-hmm. Rory T. Edwards, and always thank you for your presence. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for all that you do. You make a difference, brother. Thank you. Real quick, if you don't mind, could I share the 23 states that um, this uh, Stop Woke Act is being promoted? In? Of course you can. Okay, I'm going to go through them real quick. There's 23. So if you live in one of these states and you're listening to the Journey 2020 this evening, I want you to realize, or if you have family and they're telling them they need to be woke on these on this, on this these states right now. There's, there's 44 states who are uh, entertaining it, but 23 already have introduced this law. The first one is Alabama. The ban is in progress. Arkansas, it's banned. So this is, this is uh, African history. Taking out the curriculum in schools. This is the state. This is the whole purpose of this, this Stop Woke Act. Uh, Florida, it's already banned. In Georgia, the ban is in progress. In Idaho, it's already banned. In Iowa, it's banned. In Kentucky, the ban is in progress. In Louisiana, the ban is in progress. In Michigan, the ban is in progress. In Missouri, the ban is in progress. In Montana, the ban is in progress. In New Hampshire, it's banned. In Iowa, Ohio, excuse me, the ban is in progress. In Oklahoma, it's banned. In Pennsylvania, the ban is in progress. In Rhode Island, the ban is in progress. In South Carolina, the ban is in progress. In Tennessee, it's banned. In Texas, the ban is in progress. In Utah, the ban is in progress. In Washington State, the ban is in progress. In West Virginia, the ban is in progress. And when, in Wisconsin, the ban is in progress. So I want you in your states, if you're in that state or you know somebody, a family member in that state, look up the Stop Woke Act and uh, make sure that in this 2024 year, if you get an opportunity to speak to your presidential candidates, they may come to your your city or to get to, to campaign for votes for this 2024. Ask them how they personally believe in this Stop Woke Act. Uh, if you're going to make changes, if you want black history to be in the lives of black people and people around the world, then ask them about the Stop Woke Act and how the states that I just read to you and the other 21 that are, um, I can't, I couldn't find at that time I did this, this presentation. Um, what's their thoughts on those? All right. I didn't mean to take up too much time. No, because that actually should have been more of what we've been talking about during the show, uh, Roy. You know, yeah. we need to come back and talk about that some more, bro. Yeah, that's definitely stuff that uh, that people need to be a little aware of that, uh, you know, they're trying to eliminate it because if they say critical race theory. And if you understand true critical race theory, true critical race theory has been around for, for decades. But what they're saying is uh, the critical race theorists are not using science and logic with this. They are trying to in, in, impose in their in the will of those individuals through activism. And we know how activism is attached to us. And we know that they consider activism uh, not American or against the system, right? It's against the system because the system is not equal for us. So I just want to leave you on that note. Uh, well, well, no, no, because you're not going to leave us on that note because we're going to come back to that. We, I don't know if you're going to have a chance <laughs> to talk about it next week because we can talk about it next week. To to talk more about it and, and and what can we do? So I'm 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 going to ask you right now. Can we come back next week and talk about this a little bit more? We can if we need to. Yeah, we need to. We need to get some people to to understand this a little bit more. Okay, and what they need to do. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well then there you go, Rory T. Edwards will be back with us next week here on the Journey 2020, and uh, we're gonna stay woke, bro. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. All right, all right. This is the Journey 2020 where we come to you. 
uh, every Monday at 7 p.m. We've been around since 2013. We ask for any uh, questions or comments or concerns. You can always hit us up with an email right here at the journey2020 at gmail.com. And uh, if you have a uh, question or comments for Mr. Rory T. Edwards, uh, what's your email there, Rory? My name Rory T. Edwards1 at gmail.com. R O R Y T E D W A R D S, the numeral one at gmail.com. All right, all right. And he'll be back with us next week. As we always say, a faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. Everybody enjoy the rest of the week and hope that your team won at Super Bowl. And I am predicting that uh, San Francisco will be back. Uh, they uh, at least will be playing for the NFC Championship next year. That's my prediction. I'm Charles Morris. Enjoy the rest of the week here on The Journey 2020. Journey 2020.